Did anything ever live on the moon? Today we'll look at an interesting new idea. Could the moon ever have harboured life? I'll present to you some new insights into the history and structure of the moon. These findings could bolster the idea the moon could once have been home to life. They aren't definitive evidence, but it's a story worth exploring. The story of the moon is written into the story of life itself. Around four and a half billion years ago, the Earth itself coalesced from a cloud of gas and dust, which would eventually go on to form the entire solar system. Earth is believed to have formed without a moon. In fact, in a sense, Earth as we know it today formed as a result of the moon. Picture this. Earth is newly formed. It's a toxic planet with vast areas of its surface covered by a magma ocean. From the outer solar system it comes. An object roughly the size of Mars slams into Earth 1.0. This object has been named Thea. The impact is obviously catastrophic, essentially tearing away the outer surface of the Earth. Where does all of this crust go? Into space, forming a ring around the newly resurfaced Earth. It is this ring, consisting of the fragments of both our world and Thea, that will form the Moon. That's the Moon in a nutshell. Its influence on the course of life has been fundamental with a critical role in climate and seasonality via the key role it plays in tides. For over four billion years, the moon has stared down upon the world, seeing the march of life with all of its ups and downs. Has the moon itself been lifeless all this time? It's been our closest neighbor for practically forever. We have always thought of the moon as a dead, hostile place. Indeed, today it certainly is with no atmosphere to speak of, almost no water, and lethal solar radiation constantly bombarding the surface. The consensus of opinion is that the moon is completely devoid of life. But it may not always have been like this. It may be a stretch, but several studies have suggested that at least for a time, the moon may have been at least habitable. Perhaps not an oasis of life like Earth, but a place that could harbor it. Think of a piece of driftwood on an ocean. How is this possible? As noted, we all know the moon is hostile to all life now. However, the moon is now an inert world, devoid of any geological activity. Once though, the moon was anything but inactive. In the period after its formation, around four billion years ago, it was highly volcanically active. Intense volcanism can be a source of atmospheric gases this is definitely the case on Earth. Many atmospheric gases, including several trace greenhouse gases, are pumped into our skies by volcanoes. Greenhouse gases are pivotal in regulating climate on Earth. On the Moon, all those billions of years ago, volcanoes may have done just that. Bulking up the lunar atmosphere, and enabling this tiny world to retain some heat. In addition, a thick atmosphere provided protection against solar radiation and an environment amenable to liquid water. Water is, as we know, crucial to all life on Earth. Follow the water is one of the central catch cries of astrobiology. Find water, the reason goes, and life may be there. This isn't always the case though. Water, as it turns out, exists almost everywhere in the solar system. There's even water vapor on the sun. There's plenty of water on the moon, locked up as ice in several craters locked in permanent darkness. How would all of this water have arrived on the moon? Prevailing theory regarding the origins of Earth's water held that much of it was delivered by cometary impacts. This is certainly reasonable. Recent discoveries though hint at vast reservoirs of water locked up deep within the Earth's crust. Water may have been replenished over the eons by outgassing from volcanoes, for example. This may have happened on the moon, 
several studies of lunar composition has demonstrated that there may be similarly vast amounts of water locked up within the moon's mantle. The ancient moon may have gained a thick watery atmosphere from centuries of volcanic activity, partially terraforming it. So to put a long story short, water by itself is no guarantee of life or habitability. The moon however may once have been a very different place, with a thick atmosphere providing protection from cosmic rays and allowing pools of liquid water to form, life could have quite easily gained a foothold there. Most likely though, this life was in the form of microbial organisms which may have arrived via lithopanspermia. This is a process whereby worlds at close proximity can exchange life or at least its building blocks by impact or volcanic ejector. This very concept is being applied to crowded systems of exoplanets such as the TRAPPIST-1 system. It sure is an exciting avenue to explore. Just imagine, in such a system the possibility of interplanetary ecosystems could exist. Now this is of course very theoretical, but damn what an interesting idea. What do you think? Was the moon ever habitable? Thank you for watching. Ideas like this may seem crazy, but that's where science starts with the crazy what if ideas. Don't be afraid of asking what if questions. Be afraid of not asking any questions at all. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share it far and wide. Hit that little bell so every time I upload, you'll be the first to know. I'll see you next time.